Hey guys, it's Sam here, and yesterday Liverpool beat Man United 7 0. Yes, you heard that correct. 7 0. I mean, no one even the most hardcore, dedicated Liverpool fan could never have imagined in the in a wildest dreams that we would win seven nil. I mean, before the game, I would have taken a draw. With the way our season's gone, with the way United's season has gone, I would have taken a draw and I would have said that is a very good result. A draw, perfect, we move on to Bournemouth next weekend. But somehow, I don't know how, we pulled that off. Um, Yeah, I, I don't really know. I'm, I'm still convinced this is a, an extremely long dream and, and I will wake up and realise that we definitely did not win 7-0. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, it, it's bonkers. Um, it's so bizarre. Um, yeah, we started very well. The first, I think, 10, 15 minutes, we were, we were decent. We created a few, um, I'm not going to say clear chances, but we, we pressed very well. We were showing fight, we were showing desire. Everything that we wanted to see, we saw in the first 10-15 minutes, then for the majority of the rest of the first half, it, you know, United grew into it, but then the end of the half, Cody Gakpo scores a beautiful finish um, to put us in front at half time and you think it this is great however you could still see United coming back no one was prepared for what was going to happen in that second half no one could have predicted that if you predicted that and you predicted Liverpool would win 7-0 then you deserve all the fucking money in the world because not a single person could have thought that that was possible. I'd never thought the 5-0 win at Old Trafford last season would be topped. Well, last night it was. Winning at Anfield, 7-0. I mean, the best part of that isn't just the 7-0. It's the fact that even when it was 5-6 and 7-0... We were still playing like it was nil-nil. We were still pushing for more. We were still causing United's defence a lot of problems. And we were still hungry for more. And that's what we want to see because that's what we've not seen all season, really. Um, you know, it's been a very tough season. Um, very disappointing um, a lot of the times we've been you know not pressing properly um, not showing fight not showing hunger not showing desire and everything we wanted was seen last night um, and if you take the Real Madrid game out you take the other cup competitions out just on league performances, our last 
few league results have been very, very good. We've not lost. I think in at least our last five, it might even be our last six league games, which is incredible. Um, especially considering how awful we've been this season and how we started this year off with you know losing 3 0 to Brentford or 3 was it 3 0 or was it 3 1? I think it was no, I think it was 3 1 because I think we did score so 3 1 to Brentford, 3 0 to Wolves, 3 0 to Brighton. You know, it was just horrible. Um, and you couldn't really see a way out. Um, it was going to be very tricky, but we've turned it round. And we've gone in the space of a few weeks from, what, eight, nine, maybe even ten points off top four to now just three points off top four with a game in hand. Plus Tottenham have to come to Anfield as well. So, it's looking very good. And now this this has to be the driving force. Because we can't have any more of this sluggish, poor performances where we're lucky to only lose 3-0. That it could have been, you know, 6 or seven. We need last night's performance, especially that second half performance, for the rest of the season. Because I think we can write the Champions League off. Even though we, we've done that, I still can't see us going to the Bernabeu and winning 4 0. I just think Real Madrid are too good. It's they're too good to keep out. We might possibly win 1-0. I could probably see that, but I just think they'll score. And I think if they score, I think it's 100% done. I don't think we could then go on and win 5-1 to take us through. We have to win by four goals. Um, or score three goals and have to go to extra time and penalties and hope to win on that, but... Nah, I want that. Uh, bloody hell, where have you come from? Fucking rain. Oh, is it rain or is it hail? Oh, it's blood. I think it's a mixture of rain and hail. <laughs> well, you came out of nowhere, didn't you? Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't see that happening. So I think it will just be the league that we have to focus on. If I'm being honest, it's probably for the best to just have one game a week um, to allow that rest and recovery and just be able to go again and just focus on one game um, just to get us in the top four get the season done with bring in the re reinforcements that we very clearly need in the summer especially um, with it being that Firmino will be going Oxley chamberlain I think has been confirmed to go. Naby Keita looks increasingly likely he's going to go. James Milner as well. Um, that's not been confirmed, I don't think. But I I think it's probably a toss-up. But I think we'd probably see him go. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we're going to need some players in the summer. Um... So yeah, um, it'll just be best if we're in the, in the Champions League, so uh, to just be able to focus on that for the rest of the season, get a top four finish, and then we go again next season. But I, I cannot believe that our last three wins against Man United have been 5-0, 4-0 and 7-0. That just does not happen. It doesn't happen. Um, only on FIFA or in your dreams does that happen. It doesn't happen in real life. 
and somehow it has. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I seriously do not know what to say. I'm still in shock because I just can't quite believe that that's possible. But what I do also want to say is, you know, if you're a United fan, not only are you, it's, not only is it hard to lose 7-0 to your biggest rivals, it's, it's the manner of the, it's the body language of the players. They didn't run. They didn't show any fight or desire in that second half. Bruno Fernandes, who is your captain, is whining, moaning, throwing his arms in the air, rolling around on the floor, just being a complete knob when you're losing so heavily. And also, as soon as he loses a ball, when it's his fault, either passing it straight to a Liverpool player or not releasing the ball soon enough and getting it taken off him, he's throwing his arms in the air, he's trotting back, he's not sprinting back to win the ball. He's, he's showing he can't be arsed. And you can't do that. You, know, you just can't do that. I don't know how United fans can put up with him because it's not just because I'm a Liverpool fan I cannot stand him at all the arrogance just he's just a prick and he's not likeable whatsoever I mean there's probably at least one player on that United team I quite like and that's Marcus Rashford because he doesn't have the arrogance he's a likeable person and actually he is someone that would give a hundred percent and would try and you just don't see that from Bruno in my opinion I might be wrong but I don't see that when things are going great, great. He, you know, he's praised. He's all over. He's got a smile on his face. As soon as it starts going wrong, he's back to the moaning, complaining, arrogant prick. And that's where he's just a child. He's he's a child playing and captaining possibly the biggest club in world football. How you've gone from Harry Maguire to Bruno Fernandes, I don't know. When you've got... I know Casemiro's new, but he's more of a captain than Bruno. Why the fuck's he got the armband? Give it him. Varane, even. Even De Gea. De Gea's more of a captain than Bruno. Why's he got the armband? I don't... I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But... It is what it is. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm so, I'm not just happy, I'm, 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 I'm confused, but it's static, and I just, I, I don't know, I don't know how that's possible, I don't know how we've just won 7-0, um, against Man United as well, uh, I mean, we've won 9-0 and 7-0 this season against Bournemouth and United, and we're fifth. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. But anyway, that's. I think that's it. I don't really know what else to say. 7-0. Um, just before I go, uh, there's been a bit of a delay for the Retro FIFA series uh, because for some reason FIFA 16 has a problem with reinstalling I don't know why 
Uh, I've had this problem before with this game. It's the only game that's it's ever done this. I think the very first time I uninstalled it, which was years ago, I think it was probably when I had the just original Xbox One, the you know the big beefy black one. Um, I think maybe a file got corrupted or something, and it just doesn't like to reinstall. I don't know why. Uh, like I said, I've had this problem before. It the problem is I can't remember how I fixed it and how I got it to reinstall. So I'm going to continue to try over the next few days. If it doesn't reinstall, then we'll just have to skip it and move on to FIFA 17. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm walking around in the circle of life Doing the things I know Walking the same ways a hundred of times with the same soul But do you ever try to